Gaming 3 seems to have been a major problem for a lot of people considering the reaction of the FPL community on Twitter and other platforms. Starting in goals, Eric Dyer's handball in the final minute not only cost Tottenham the win against Newcastle, but it also cost my Game Week 3 squad's goalkeeper a clean sheet. It seems there's a general consensus that the handball rule is too harsh at the moment and there's a possibility that it might change in the near future, but we'll have to wait and see. I made the last minute decision to bring in Kyle Walker-Peters in favour of Tyreek Mitchell, which turned out to be the correct choice. And despite an impressive victory by the Foxes against Man City, James Justin only gave a one-point return. In midfield, Jack Harrison's superb ball to find Patrick Bamford scored him 7 points in total, while Klitsch contributed little to my game week squad as Leeds scored a late winner to beat a stubborn Sheffield United by one goal. Bruno Fernandes scored a penalty and assisted and was this week's highest point scorer, while Mo Salah failed to find the net against a very poor Arsenal side, although he was fortunate to get an assist in my opinion, with the nature of how it was given. Despite that, he looked ever dangerous. Harry Kane's assist to Lucas Moura means he was the only forward to bring in returns this game week, even with West Ham crushing Wolves 4-0, Antonio couldn't get on the score sheet or the assist list either. Suchek and McCarthy both brought in returns from the bench, which is regrettable for the team's sake. With a final score of 57 points and a total score of 191, my overall rank has surprisingly shot up from 827,000 to just about 363,000, which speaks to how poor the game week was for players in general. I didn't reach my goal of a 60 point average this week, but I'm hoping to make up for it in Game Week 4. For Game Week 4's team selection, I'll be using a free transfer to take out Timo Werner and bring in Dominic Calvert Lewin. He has been on exceptional form so far, and it seems like he's not going to slow down just yet. It was between him and Patrick Bamford, but Leeds are up against the Man City side who have just lost convincingly, and they have a history of taking out their frustrations on their next opponents. Leeds United also have tougher fixtures coming up in comparison to Everton, and so Calvert-Lewin is the stronger option for me. Timo Werner might yet return to the team, but I'm curious to see first how he plays alongside Pulisic on his return and Hakim Ziyech, as I believe they'll be the reason Werner gets off the mark in the Premier League. Hugo Lloris is up against Man United this week, and so he drops to the bench in favour of McCarthy who plays against newly promoted West Brom. At the back there is no expected change from Game Week 3, while in midfield, Suchek comes in for Jack Harrison, who is ineligible to play against his parent club, Man City. Klitsch is Leeds United's penalty taker, also I'm not really expecting much from him this game week. Bruno Fernandes and Salah keep their places, with Salah retaining the armband once more. The choice was between three players in Bruno, Salah and Calvert-Lewin, but Salah playing against Aston Villa is the reason I'm expecting the most points of the game week to come from him. Harry Kane and Antonio keep their place, while Dominic Calvert-Lewin comes in with the vice-captain armband. Joining Loris on the bench, we have Mitchell, Williams and Harrison. The plan is for the team to remain largely unchanged for the next few game weeks, with the upcoming fixtures of most players taken into account. But last-minute decisions can be made, as was the case in Game Week 3's team selection. Go ahead and leave your own fantasy tips in the comments below, and be sure to like the video if you did and subscribe to the channel for more Premier League content.